who exactly and what exactly is the Black Hammer Organization or the Black Hammer Group? Who are these people? Antifa, <laughs> it's me, Ghazi, the commander in chief of the Black Hammer Organization. Land back. Land back. Land back. Land back. I heard you had some not so nice things to say about me. I heard you had some nice things to say about my hammers. Mm. I heard you had not so nice things to do to one of my members, one of my dear, dear members, an African Filipino mother that you doxxed and thought you could get away with it, thought we were gonna back down, thought we were gonna take it. But no, that's not gonna happen. You messed with the wrong one this time. Yes, oh yes you did. Oh yes you did. Cause we don't take it lightly when harm is done to our African and colonized women. And that's why at Black Hammer we say, touch one, touch all, touch one, touch all, touch one, touch all, touch one, touch all, touch one, touch all. And you touched one of us. So now you've touched all of us and we're going to have to do something about it. Land back. 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 And then you wanted to talk about me. You wanted to call me anti-Semitic. You wanted to call me an anti-vaxxer because we're against vaccines. You wanted to call me all kinds of horrific things. Mm. But I don't really give a damn. And none of us give a damn. But where you went wrong was when you doxxed one of my members, an amazing African Filipino mother. And you made her so worried about her own safety that she had to pay for a more expensive security system and she could barely afford it because you know that's the reality of us poor and working class black people. We just don't have money to spend, 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 make it rain, rain, rain like that. And especially not with COVID taking all of our jobs away. So we told you you need to pay up. We told you you need to give reparations to our comrade that you doxxed. And let me clear up all those nasty things you want to say about me and say about my brother. Land back. 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 See, Antifa, you want to co opt our movement, but we're not going to let it happen. Not this time. Mayo boys and girls in your suburban world want to jump on our hashtags just so you can come outside and play a video game and bust some windows, huh? Break down some businesses. Well, you've been messing up because you've been destroying black and brown businesses. Yeah, the hair braiders and the barbers, the bodegas, uh-huh. You've been messing with our black and brown businesses, small businesses 
that literally uphold 12 to 20 family members just so you could play in the streets like the heroes or something. And then with an organization, Black Hammer, that's actually led by colonized people, black and brown, poor working class people, you know, the ones that are actually dying, the ones that are actually dying. We're the Breonna Taylors. We're the Mike Browns. We're the Sandra Blands. So who the heck are you? Leading all these protests. Who the heck are you? Talking to you too, BLM. We know you're paid for by the Democratic Party. We know you'll do anything that the Democrats say. You're not for our people. You're pocketing all that money. Yeah, I saw that you made two billion this summer off of George Floyd's name. Fakers. But we've been leading our own thing. We've been doing our own thing. And then Antifa wants to co-opt it. Nope, not gonna happen. They wanna dox one of our members and think they get away with it. Nope, it's not gonna happen. Land back. Land back. Land back. Land back. So we're coming here today to say very clearly. One, don't touch African and colonized women children, men, any of us, but specifically African colonized women. And if you think that we're joking, if you think that we're playing, maybe you should ask my niece's ex-boyfriend who hit her and knocked her tooth out of her mouth, ask him how he's doing, because the streets may call him Jarrell, but I call him Sweet Booty. Ain't that right, sweet booty? <laughs>
they're so similar. Um, and the leader of the group is very, <laughs> he's a character. He's a character. And people with these kinds of personalities can easily influence vulnerable people. And it's obvious. And a lot of people were hurt um, in this organization. Uh, and some have transitioned in this organization, just like Carbonation. So I just want you guys to take a look at the similarities, at the pictures, the, the uh, I don't know, the verbiage, the mission. You know, it's it's so uh, secluded and it, it's weird how people formulate these organizations as if they're, it, it seems like they intend, it, they start off with good intentions. It seems that way all the time, but it never, ever ends that way, ever. The lines always get blurred. It start off, it begins as a uh, concern for the people. And concern for the people ends up equating to people being hurt, manipulated, humiliated, beaten. I mean, how does that happen? You know, and it, it this is just another sad story of... Yet another black cult in our community that you guys probably didn't know of. And here you go. Let's take a look. I love you long. I love you strong. Touch one. Touch all. Touch one of us. Touch all of us. Amen. Amen. I told you I had a word for you today. Amen. Amen. Give him glory. Okay, so according to their website, the Black Hammer Party exists to take the land back for all colonized people worldwide. We are focused on building dual contending power of and for the colonized masses. Under the leadership of the colonized poor and working class, our mission is to use our collective building power to unite, strengthen, and liberate all colonized nations. Okay, so what does Wikipedia say about the Black Hammer Party? The Black Hammer Party, formerly the Black Hammer Organization, is an American Black nationalist political organization founded in Atlanta, Georgia in 2019, who advertises itself as a symbol of hope for the colonized working class. They rose to prominence in the early 2020s amidst the George Floyd protests and their attempted creation of a commune in the Rocky Mountains named Hammer City. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution described the organization as mixing black nationalist rhetoric and a revolutionary message with hot button issues like anti-vaccine myths and election conspiracies. Commentators, including former leaders and members, have referred to the organization as a cult. Ghazi Kadzo, The People's Robin Hood, by Chief Oju Mukaro. I met Ghazi Kadzo for the first time in Chicago toward the beginning of the pandemic. Actually, more specifically, it was a few days after George Floyd was murdered by the pigs in Minneapolis. We went to, to a protest in downtown Chicago, and in addition to exclaiming for justice at the top of our lungs, we distributed free KN95 masks to colonized people at the protest. It was early on the pandemic, so many people were going completely maskless, 
even though hundreds were still dying in the hospitals. People were angry and it made sense that no one was actively informed about how to say, stay safe. It took this country two years to even say KN95 masks were better than others. However, Commander Ghazi understood and they wanted to protect their people. So we passed out the mask and she slayed doing it. Locks in the head wrap for protection from the virus and wearing their beloved camel jacket. Kino wears that camel jacket now, but of course he styled it for himself. Now it ain't no got no sleeves. <laughs> That's what it says. Now, as revolutionaries, we don't measure someone's merit by subjective memories or circumstances. Revolutionary work isn't about feelings, opinions, vibes. It's about what is, what it says, what is work. The work exposes all. And from passing out KN95 masks at George Floyd protests in Chicago to passing out bands to the homeless in Atlanta, the work exposes that Ghazi Kazo is indeed the people's Robin Hood. Oh, white man! I'm back. This is I, and I'm a recruit for the Black Hammer Organization's no! Reparations Corps. Join us every single Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to follow the biggest and the baddest anti-colonial organization in organizing your community against white nationalism. Keep in mind, their enemies aren't white nationalists. White nationalists and black uh, separatists actually get along. Historically, they've been allies. Revolution is people work. So Black Hammer wants you to sign up today at blackhammer.org slash reparations. Learn to unite your friends and neighbors under the banner of anti-colonialism. Nice. He speaks like they're holding him hostage. Yeah, yeah, they, they're all, they've fucking got a gun to his head just off camera. God almighty. Oh, dude, oh God. There really aren't that many of them, but the, the people who unironically demonstrate white guilt make me want to crawl out of my skin. I've mentioned this before, but like, have any of the, any of the black people watching right now, have you ever uh, dated a white person who was really weird about this? I'm so sorry about everything that my people have done to your people. You know, oh, I try to be... At least one of you here has experienced this, okay? Come on, I see some yeses already. Yeah. Um, oh, God. Now, of course, nobody's ever done this to me because I'm a white guy, so nobody's ever apologized for their existence to me. But um, I imagine that would make me want to die. Like, that, that would make me want to die. Tonight, we're getting an inside look at a deadly SWAT standoff involving an extremist group in Fayetteville. It all started when someone in that group home called 911. They call themselves the Black Hammer Party, and former members say the leader hijacked the movement and held them against their will. Tonight, they're speaking only to Fox 5's Rob Dirienzo. The Black Hammer Party is an organization widely considered a fringe extremist group that former members say targets people who are homeless for recruitment. I spoke to one of the nine people who were in the Fayetteville house on the morning of the deadly SWAT standoff. That person says the surviving members of the group are looking for them, so we agreed to conceal their identity. We woke up and the police and everything were surrounding the house, so we were asked to come out one by one. This former member of Black Hammer says the six hour standoff was terrifying. Police say they got a 911 call from inside the house from someone who said they were being held against their will in the garage. I could have been there. I would have been next. I was starved out, sleep deprived. I couldn't take it no more and I just wanted to go home. Former members say the group's leader, Ghazi Kadzo, real name Augustus Romain, took young homeless people in from off the streets, promising them food, shelter, and income. They say once they were in, they couldn't get out. Yeah, he does. He would make us do physical labor. Like, he forced me to stand outside for like five hours with his defense, so I couldn't leave. At the end of Tuesday's standoff, police say they found the body of 18-year-old Amonti Ammons, one of the alleged kidnappers, who the group calls their defense minister. Police say he killed himself. Ammon's mom, back home in North Carolina, says her son battled mental illness. 
my son called me and told me he was in an organization and it was helping the homeless. She says they took advantage of his condition and brainwashed him. She blames Black Hammer for her son's death. If I had a new that this was going on down there, God is my living witness, I would have never let my son stay in Georgia. Black Hammer's former chief of staff, who calls herself Savvy, says once you're in, you cannot leave. The group began in 2019 with a stated mission of taking the land back for all colonized people. Savvy said Kodzo infiltrated it. They're already using this kid as a martyr, which I think is really sick. They're already fundraising for off of this kid's death. Now a judge has denied bond for both Kodzo and another member who allegedly took part in the kidnapping plot. Kodzo is also charged with sodomy. Next on News Edge, I'm talking with an extremism researcher who's been following this group for a while. Why he says that most in the home were Kodzo's victims. In Atlanta, Rob DiRanzo, Fox 5 News. Rob, thanks.